Conversations with Phil. Business advice without the BS. Just straight talk and frank conversations to help you grow your business by teaching you to get more leads, earn more referrals, and close more business. Each episode, Phil has a conversation with a business leader to offer you insights from their business and translate it into actionable tips for your business. So awesome, awesome, awesome. I get to talk to my buddy, Mike Robertson today. So excited right before he takes a trip across the country or wherever he's going today. Really jacked for that. I met Mike, oh gosh, a year, two years ago at the National Speaker Association Conference. Mike is a magician with PowerPoint. He had this thing, no power, no point. And I was like, yeah, well, I do need to do better slides. So I'm sure I can learn something. Yeah, don't put words on it. Use pictures. And then I saw Mike's slides. I'm like, whoa, dude, these are awesome. So Mike's going to share some of his magic with us today. And he's going to talk to us about, uh, talk with me and, and you, you two about his journey and, and how he's evolved. Because, you know, sometimes our greatest gifts are right in front of us and we don't even see them. So we're going to talk a little bit about that too. So Mike, thanks for being here, buddy. I really appreciate you. Bill, it is a pleasure to hang out with you anytime I get the opportunity, buddy. <laughs> I feel the same for you, my friend. So, so cool. So, so Mike, I, there's so many ways that, that we could start this, but I, I think it's important. Let's just start with this PowerPoint magic, because that's the, that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand is like, isn't PowerPoint just boring slides and you don't even need them if you're a speaker? Yeah, unfortunately, in most cases, it is just boring slides. But uh, part of my backstory is the reason why I, I'm doing the slides the way I'm doing them now. I was a graphic designer for 20 plus years. And even going further back than that, as a child, I did magic. I, I've always had this performance urge. I always wanted to be in front of an audience. And so I, then I did music and stuff. But when I got into speaking, at first, I didn't use any slides at all. Five years ago, I hadn't ever done a, a PowerPoint presentation. And, uh, and then I started thinking, you know, if I did do slides, I've got all this back graphic design background. I bet I can make great looking slides anyway. And so I started delving into the programs and seeing what they were capable of doing. And I discovered I could sort of do magic, literally like a magic trick with a slide. And so I started pushing the envelope of what my programs were capable of. And, and, and the time we met in San Diego at the convention, I kept getting interrupted by applause breaks because I put a slide on the screen. I haven't ever seen that happen before where people applaud your slides. And, and it was not until that day, at the end of that presentation, somebody said, can I just hire you to do my slides? And I thought, wow, that's an interesting idea. And uh, so that's, I do that quite a bit now for a lot, of, a lot of pretty great speakers. But it all comes from that combination of magic and graphic design skills that I bring to my slides because I, I see that blank screen as a blank canvas, not just as a flip chart, you know, where you brainstorm ideas and then you rip it off and throw it away. That devalues your content when you treat your slides like a flip chart. So I, I look at it as a blank canvas and I think, what can I paint on this canvas that's going to be beautiful and is going to enthrall the audience and that they're going to remember, because that's what we want, is for them to remember our content when they leave. And so that's my motivation for the things I do. Wow. So, Mike, is, is it possible that we can actually see some of these slides here? Can you show us some of this magic here? Nah. Uh, oh, right. okay. So, oh, right. okay. Oh, yay! Okay. What you got? So Mike's going to show us some of this PowerPoint magic. I knew he could do this. So this is really cool. So if you think about the boring slides while Mike's setting up here that you normally see in eight-point font, you can't read in the back of the room, you get sucked in. But Mike makes magic. So let's take a look. All right, Phil, I want to show you one slide. This is a single slide. Okay. And, uh, and we start, I start with this image because it looks like the kind of painting you would see in a hotel ballroom or a bank lobby or something like that. Abstract, just color, no real uh, focus on it. It's just a good example of modern art, a nice example of that. But let me show you where this image comes from. This is actually a picture of a brick 
And here's where the brick is. It's in this pillar at a convenience store gas station near my office. And I pulled up there to fill up with gas one day. And when I got out of the car, I saw this brick and I looked at it and I thought, look at all the car doors that have banged into this thing. Look at the different colors of paint. Every color of paint, every kind of car you can imagine is, has banged their door into this. And so I just snapped a picture of it with my phone. And I thought, it's kind of a cool looking image. And you know, as a speaker, we're always looking for stories. We're always looking for images. And so I looked at this image and I thought, okay, is there a story that applies to this image? And actually, I ended up coming up with two stories. The first is from the point of view of this brick. And that is this idea. You're going to get knocked around. You're going to get bumped around. You're going to have disagreements and scrapes and bumps throughout life. But this brick still does perfectly what it was designed to do, what it was built to do. And that's a lesson that we can all take to heart. We're going to get banged around, but as long as we stay the course, things are going to go all right. But the second and probably more profound lesson is from the point of view of the car door. And that is this, no matter where you go, you're always going to leave a little part of yourself behind. You always leave an impression behind. And so the question then that you're able to ask the audience after you explain this is, what are you leaving behind in your encounters with people? Damage? Drama? Chaos? Scrapes? Bings and bangs? Or are you leaving beauty, something artistic, something that lasts? And that's one slide. Wow. And that shows you the power of what you can do with a single slide. You can create art. Wow. I want to give you a standing ovation right now, Mike. I mean, that's, that's okay, go ahead. fantastic. Go ahead. Hey! Yeah, that's a sitting yeah. ovation, Bill, but that's all right. Because if I, if I stand up, you see my belly, and I'm, I'm not going to show that today. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's interesting. And so, Mike, talk to us a little bit about that process. I, I, don't, I don't want you to, you know, give away all your magic here, but just talk to us about, is, is that, like, something that you have to buy another program for, or is that no. something to actually do inside PowerPoint? No, I always laugh when people say, oh, have you seen Prezi? Have you seen this? It's the new thing. And they get these new programs because they do one thing, but they don't ever take the time to delve into the program they already have. Everybody has PowerPoint. Everybody that has a Mac has Keynote. And yet most people don't use anything but the templates, the fonts that are already set up, the standard default stuff. And then they wonder why their slides are not engaging. It's like, you know, having a piano in your room and using it to set your drink on top of and saying, you know, I wish we had more music around here. you got to dig into it and see what that program is capable of because it's like Photoshop. You can use it to, to just crop images or you can create art with it, but you got to delve into it a little bit. So I spent time looking at every menu item, every animation, every transition to see what they would do. I would mess with the sliders to see, okay, this does this if you set it for two seconds. What does it look like if you set it for 30 seconds? Well, it could be something magical. And so I experimented with all that, and then I just file all that away. I don't know when I'm going to use it, but there comes a time when I think, oh, you know, I could use that confetti effect where I, it takes 30 seconds, and then the, the letters turn into like snowflakes. And then I could bring in a scene behind it that looks like a, a winter scene, and the words actually make the snow in the scene. Well, that's the kind of stuff that becomes magic. So a lot of it is just knowing the capabilities of the program. Now, I know, I know you know how to do this, but I'm astounded by how many speakers, how many presenters don't know how to add a font to their computer. That's true. I would say the vast majority do not because their eyes glaze over when you say, do you know how to add a new font? Uh, it's like it never occurred to them. Fonts can make a huge difference in your slides and their effectiveness and how suitable they are for a topic. <clears throat> you know, the slide you use for the circus coming to town is not the same one you use for the funeral home. <laughs> it's a, a perfect font for everything, but no font is perfect for everything. So you gotta, you gotta see what's out there. And then the other, the other, uh, thing that so many people do wrong is when they put a graphic, a picture, in a slide, and it's tiny, and so they say, well, i got to resize this. And so they just grab one corner of it, and they just stretch it, and suddenly the person's face looks like this. 
or it's spread out this way. And, and they don't, I can't believe they don't notice that because when I see somebody put up a slide and their images are not enlarged properly, it takes me right out. I go, Oh, come on. All you have to do is hold down the shift key when you, when you enlarge it or shrink it and it stays proportional. Those two things would improve 95% of the slides out there, but there's so many more things that are possible. It's just learning to think of it more artistically and more creatively. And instead of thinking of it as like a whiteboard or a, a chalkboard, you know, yeah, no, that's great. You know, thinking of it like a canvas and those two little tips, right? Think about adding a font. Now, not 10 fonts on one slide, right? But adding a font that looks right for what you're trying to do and then stretching the picture correctly and really resizing it instead of just stretching it up, out and making it all scale jaggedy. Easy tips, easy things that, that people can do. Well, and you know, people, many of us uh, pay good money to somebody to design a logo for us. And chances are good that logo has a particular font in it. Why don't we use that font then in our slideshows? It increases the branding. Why don't we use the color in our logo as background in our slides? Every slide you put up is a chance to brand yourself, to reinforce your brand. And most of us are just really missing the boat there. Yeah, good, good point. So do you think, Mike, that the reason that many miss the boat is because they don't know or because they don't care? I think it's because they don't know. Um, I literally, many times, I literally have heard people gasp when I do something on the screen that just blows their mind. You know, when I reach up to the screen and I grab a letter and a word and I move it to the front of the word and it spells something different, I, I've heard people go, what? And then they come up afterwards and say, how did you do that? How did you do that? Well, I just, I just thought about it for a while. I just delved into it. I, I thought, what would I like to see on screen? And then how can I accomplish what I would like to see on screen? We tend to forget that, you know, our audience, they've just come from seeing the new Avengers movie or the new Jurassic Park or Superman versus Batman. They've seen the ultimate power of computer generated imagery. They're not going to be impressed by Helvetica on a white background. You know, we got to up our game if we want to, hold their attention. That's why so many times you look at an audience at a speech and everybody's got their phones out or their iPads and they're, they're checking their email or checking their Facebook. It's because we're not holding their attention with this giant glowing rectangle we've got beside us or behind us. It's a huge elephant in the room and we're pretending like, oh, it doesn't really matter. We gotta ride that elephant. We gotta hop on that thing and make it do tricks. Awesome. Wow. Yeah, that, that's, that's for sure, Mike. I, I think there, there are so many tricks that, that we can do. You, you gave us two simple ones there. What, as, you've, as you've seen this, is there someone besides you that you've seen that, that really does a, a nice job with slides? If somebody's looking for maybe a little different view, um, is there a place, uh, another place they can go? Not that I'm looking for you to necessarily you know, advertise your competition, but I think it's important to know that this isn't just a Mike Robertson thing. Right. This is other people have this talent, too. Well, it, not as many, apparently, as you would like to think. I, I have only met two guys uh, in NSA who who do slide design for other people. Both of theirs are very different. Mine. They both do very nice looking slides. Uh, but I haven't seen anybody who who brings this magic slash graphic design background and, and really wants the slides to do something amazing and not just have words or pictures on it, to do something amazing. The slide uh, can become kind of your partner or your sidekick in, in your presentation. It can deliver a punchline. A slide can, I've seen a slide can make people cry. A slide can make people laugh. It can make them spontaneously applaud, but you've got to think of it differently. And so, I think, I think anybody who's creative, who has some artistic, creative background, those are the kind of people who need to be doing slides because they're, gonna, they're not going to be bothered by what society thinks or what they think is the norm. They're going to want to stretch the boundaries and say, well, let's see what we can do. That's what affects change is people who say, let's see what we can do. Yeah, no, that was a setup, Mike. I know you're the only one that makes the magic happen. <laughs> I, I have to say, I've, your slides consistently do impress me and and for real i mean i i do want to applaud when i see them when i saw them first i'm like wow this is this is really cool this is something that i that i haven't seen 
anybody else do before or since, which is really, really exciting. So Mike, tell us a little bit about, you know, how did you get interested in magic? I mean, that's a lot of kids say they're interested in magic. They might get a magic trick kit and then that's it. But talk to me a little bit about how that happened. I, I think I got one of those magic kits you get when you're a kid that has a dozen different tricks in it with little plastic egg cups and things in it. And I liked that. And I started checking out books out of the library on magic and learning to do some tricks with coins and cards and things like that. My dad used to go to a convention every year in Dallas and there was a magic store right near the convention center. And he would bring me a new trick home every time we went to the convention. And so I, I don't know where the ham gene comes from that we have that makes us want to perform. You know, we do the thing that is most people's greatest fear. I don't know why, where that comes from, but I had that performance gene from age six. And so I, I love nothing better than to stand in front of my family or my Cub Scout troop or something like that and do magic tricks. And I wasn't even very good at it. Uh, and then when I was 13 or 14, I started playing the guitar. Oh, girls like that. When you can play the guitar and sing, started playing keyboards. And I was a mu music guy for many years. I was a music major in school. So I've always had this urge to, to be creative and to perform. And it's just taken different forms over the years. But I find at the age I'm at now, which is, uh, which is 62, all of those things come together. The magic, the graphic design, the music, the speaking, it all comes together and I can use them all in one presentation. And how much more value does that add? A ton. Because once the, just when the audience thinks they've got you figured out and all of a sudden you break into song and you sound good, they go, oh, okay, what else can this guy do? And that, that's the way you want. You want to be a superhero on the stage. You want to be a rock star up there. And so that's why after all the things I've dabbled in, this is where I've chosen to land because it satisfies all those urges and lets me use all those skills that I've acquired over the years. That's awesome. So, and often, right, those skills are right in front of us. We don't even recognize that we have them until somebody else says, ooh, Mike, you should do that, right? Yeah, that's why I often tell people we don't often recognize our own gifts because we think we, we envy other people's gifts. We say, if only I could do what that guy does. If only I could play the piano like she does, or if only I could paint like he does. And, and we miss our own gifts. And because they're natural, because they're part of our DNA, we don't even think they're special. My daughter, when she was 15, she started drawing these amazing color pencil drawings. And, uh, I mean, really photorealistic drawings. And I said, Lindsay, these are awesome. You could sell these. And she said, well, Dad, it's not like it's hard. And I said, no, it is hard for everybody but you. And see, she didn't even value her own gift because it came naturally to us. So music comes naturally to me. I think speaking comes pretty naturally to me. But I have been around the world enough to know now that those are valuable gifts. And I'm grateful for them. And I look for new ways to channel those gifts in uh, in new directions and so when it came time for me to propose to the woman i married i didn't want to just take her to a restaurant and pull out a ring i i wrote a song i went into a studio i recorded the song multi-tracked it all myself wow the radio station into playing it at a certain time on a certain day while we sat in a beautiful botanical gardens and she held my my radio in her lap and the dj said now here's a special song for lisa from mike and my song came on the radio asking her to marry me. Wow. I couldn't have done that if I hadn't recognized the gifts I had and thought, could I use my gifts in this direction in a way that hasn't been done before? That's, what, that's the most satisfying thing in life is to find your niche and then to find ways to expand your niche with your innate abilities. Wow. That's fantastic. So, Mike, for people who are just maybe starting out on this niche finding journey. Do you have a suggestion for how they might get started along the journey? You touched on it a minute ago, Phil, when, when you said people often recognize our guests before we do. Ask your best friend, what do you think I'm really good at? What do you think is the coolest thing I do? Chances are they will know. They may say, 
you bake the best chocolate chip cookies I've ever tasted. And you may say, that's not really a great gift. Well, ask Debbie Fields if that's a great gift. She looked around in her life and said, I got to make a change. And she couldn't figure a single skill she had, except that she liked to bake cookies. And now she's the head of Miss Field, Mrs. Fields, a billion dollar food conglomerate, because she took her skill, though most people would say that's not a big skill, a big talent, and she parlayed it into a new way. So find out what it is that you're good at, and then look for a new way to use that that nobody else has covered before. Get off the beaten path. There you go. Great suggestion. So, so Mike, I know people are going to want to see more of your gifts and your skills. So can you give us one more magic trick before we take you out and share where they can get more from you? One more magic trick. Let me see. Okay. Um, I guess I need to turn share screen back on. Uh, yep. This is an effect that, that I use that most people don't really know you can do in a slide. And that's layering things so that it can appear three dimensional. I found this image and, uh, and so I was using it in a talk I was giving and I had the words do this. And afterwards, people were coming up to me saying, okay, how did you make those words go through those rings? I've been using PowerPoint for 20 years. How did you do that? And so I said, all right, I'll show you. I start with the image and then in Photoshop or whatever image editing program you need, I, I erased everything that I show in red here. And so the image ends up like this with transparent areas in it. And then I set the type on a layer behind that because you can stack as many layers on a slide as you want. And then I put another copy of the original in the back. And so now it looks like it's three dimensional, but it's really just a sandwich of different images put together. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> That's really cool. So, so Mike, if people want to work with you or they want to get more of your greatness, how do they find you? How do they interact with you? Well, just remember my name is Mike. My website is isthismikeon.com. Isthismikeon, M-I-K-E, on.com. And it has details about the things that I speak about. And it also has a page about my slide design services and a rough idea of what that costs and things like that. But I would love to hear from people. You can write me at Mike. At is this mic on? And uh, I'm easy to find. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Mike Robertson, thank you for taking time today to show us your magic and share some of your amazing gifts with us. I so appreciate you, buddy. Bill, it is a pleasure, buddy. I can't wait to see you in Phoenix. Yeah, seeing you soon, for sure. All right.